Hello, power users. Today we're learning how to split text into its individual words, lines or letters, and then animate each of its parts using Glue's GSAP split text event to achieve stunning visuals on our Elementor websites. Let's jump right in. We have prepared a fairly complex combination of split text animations to showcase the potential of this feature, but we've also worked with other GSAP events and even the 3D model widget to show just how seamlessly everything works together. Tutorials for both in the description. The first animation is a letter-based animation. The next container has an animation by word. In the third container, we have a combination of line-based and letter-based animations. And in the last container, we have a line animation by itself, along with the 3D model widget for added visual impact. Let's go through our setup step by step, so that by the end, you'll be able to set up GSAP split text on any page in a similar but personal way that suits your specific animation needs. Let's take a look at the first container. We have a heading widget that we've styled, but we didn't actually target it with any GSAP tween or event, meaning this will scroll away as it would normally. As we saw, however, we'll be animating the second heading widget down to the letter. Notice how we gave it an HTML tag of H2. This will be relevant later. We also gave it a CSS ID of letters. It's very important to be as unique as you can be when giving elements their IDs or otherwise selectors. We also have a Lottie that we'll be turning transparent with a standard GSAP event type. Scrolling down in the Elementor editor, we'll see that we have a lot of black space. The first container is very, very tall. Remember, the height of the container determines the scrolling space and as such the animation length, according to the canvas settings in your tweens. We eventually get to the second container with another heading widget, also an H2, with a CSS ID of words. The text doesn't have to be an H2, we can use just about any HTML tag. The text in the third section has a CSS ID of lines, and it too has a H2 tag. Scrolling all the way down, we have our last section. The text has a CSS ID of text-1, is an H2, and we have our 3D model widget for added graphical effects Let's start back on the top and navigate to GSAP scroll trigger in the advanced tab of the page settings up here. We will need to turn on enable GSAP, enable timeline, and timeline scrolling. But we don't need to touch any global parameters here, we can start working directly on the tweens. The first tween is the letter-based animation in our first container. We've picked the split text GSAP event type. We set to function. The trigger element is going to be sec1 which is the CSS ID we gave to our first container. The split type menu is where we choose what to split our text into for our animation. We choose letters here, but we could actually choose more than one. We'll see how that changes the behavior later. In the target field, we've entered our text CSS ID, but we've also targeted the H2. The reason we need to target the HTML tag as well is so that GSAP will know what div to look into to split the text contained within. Should we target the same text in a second tween, however, as we'll see later, we won't need to write the HTML tag again. The transformation settings is where we set the values our text will eventually change into at the end of the animation, just like any other GSAP event. But here, we have further options like the color, background color, and even a custom argument field where we can manipulate any CSS property. Essentially, as seen, each letter will become fully transparent as it scales up rotate by 35 degrees, and change its color to red. To make sure each letter animates after the other, and not all at the same time, we've given the stagger field a value of 0.4 seconds here in the animation settings. To learn more about staggering, watch the staggering and manual timeline tutorial. Link in the description. As we can see here, if we remove our staggering value, the text will still be split in letters, but each of the split elements will transform concurrently. In the animation settings, we've also toggled on immediate render. This applies the starting values of an animation to our target element as soon as the element is created, as to avoid unsightly jumps or other hiccups. Toggling this on is recommended with the split text event type. Our canvas settings are as straightforward as can be, top top, bottom bottom. As we know from the other tutorials, this means that the animation will start as soon as the top of the container is at the top of the viewport 
and end as soon as the bottom of the container reaches the bottom of the viewport. We also entered a scrub value of 1. Scrubbing links the animation to the scrolling. We've also pinned the letters to themselves by entering their text's ID into the pin element field in the pin settings. More information on pinning in the pin functions tutorial linked in the description. This will make sure that the text won't scroll away until its animation finishes. We're animating the Lottie here too, but it's a standard GSAP event with an opacity transformation. On to the next container, we have our second animated text. In the corresponding tween, we've selected the word split type and selected hashtag sec2 as the trigger, which is the second container's ID. The transformation settings for this text are simply opacity zero and a subtle translation of 10 pixels on the x-axis. Again, considering the function is tool, our text will reach these values at the end of its animation. We've staggered this too with a value of one second and pinned it to itself. Now's a good time to see what happens if we select more than one split type. In fact, let's select all three. We'll change the transformation values and remove the staggering too and we will add more words to each line to make it a bit more obvious. As we see, the same transformation applies to each element we've selected. The lines animate, while the words inside it animate independently as they move with the lines. Same goes for the letters as they move with the words and the lines, having this effect of amplifying our animation. In the third container, however, we actually targeted our text with two different tweens instead of using two split types in a single tween. This is because, as we just saw, selecting two or more split types applies the same single animation to each split element. But we can actually split the same text in more than one element and then have a unique animation for each. So, the first tween for this text has a function of two, a trigger of hashtag sec3, which is our third container's ID, targets our text here with a CSS ID of hashtag lines and its h2, has a line split type, a simple translation transformation, a stagger value of one second, and we pin the text to itself in the pin options. Our second tween for the same text has a from function and a word split type, meaning our words will start from the transformation values rather than getting to them. Same trigger element and same target. But as we said previously, we don't need to target the HTML tag anymore, as we already told GSAP where to look for the text in the previous tween. The transformation settings for the words will make them start out with a color that will eventually turn back to the default text style option color set in the widget at the end of the animation, since we have a from function. This animation too is staggered by one second. We haven't pinned the text in this second tween, since it's already been pinned by the one before. Checking back at how this looks in the front end, we can see the text gets split by lines, the lines translate upwards, and concurrently, the words start changing color. This method gives us precise control over every single type of element we can split the text into. We could have, for example, created a third tween and split the letters too, and have them run a different animation altogether. In the last container, our last bit of text is targeted by our last split text, GSAP tween. This has a value of to, hashtag sec for as the trigger element, it being our last container, a split type of lines, and targets our text with an ID of hashtag text-1, along with its H2 tag. The transformations are translation, opacity to zero, and we're also going to change the line's color as they go transparent. As with the other heading widgets, we've also pinned this one to itself. We then have a tween for the 3D model widget scene, wrapping up the visual effects of this container. Let's take a look at how this all comes together one last time. Impressive, isn't it? Combined with the other GSAP event types and the 3D model widget, this feature allows Glue to turn Elementor into the quickest and easiest tool to create the best possible looking web pages imaginable, keeping it a relevant page builder, even if we are looking to achieve modern and complex visual effects that were previously outright impossible to implement seamlessly. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.